this is our uh, new video in a series of videos that we'll be um, uh, collecting and um, the experiment today is about decar decarboxylation of salicylic acid and uh, when you decarboxylate salicylic acid that means when you remove carbon dioxide from a, mo from a molecule of salicylic acid you'll end up with phenol in a nutshell we're synthesizing phenol and uh, this video will be part of a sequence of um, experiments where we will use the phenol to make paranitrophenol and then from there we'll go to another compound eventually we will end up with acetaminophen okay that's the goal so um, so the, this will be the first experiment in that series where we take salicylic acid we heat it and when you heat any compound containing carboxylic acid you would just uh, liberate the CO2 and then you'd be left with the alcohol and um, so I'm going to stop here and walk you through the reaction that's, on, that's written on the board and then I'm going to walk you through the experimental setup. I've already set up and the experiment's running so I'm going to just walk you through the setup and then I'll pick you back up when, uh, when the experiment is somewhere near completion. All right. It's a fairly simple experiment. It could be done within a two to three hour lab period, depending on how long your lab period is. Typically, if it's two hours, yeah, you can you, you can accomplish this synthesis phenol. It takes a couple of days for the phenol to crystallize into a pure solid. So yeah, you can you can finish all that in one lab period and put the phenol in a sealed container and you're good to go. All right, when I come back, I will show you the reaction and walk you through the setup. Tune in. Okay, we're back. Um, as I pointed out, we'll be synthesizing phenol from salicylic acid. As you could see, salicylic acid contains both the acid group on the bottom and the alcohol group on the top. As you heat it at about 181 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of salicylic acid, the CO2 will be gone at that time and uh, you'll be able to distillate phenol. So we're doing a simple distillation with heating and we're going to go from salicylic acid to phenol and the byproduct is CO2. To actually allow you all to see the CO2 I'm going to do something you probably have seen it in your general chemistry class because CO2 when it combines with water makes carbonic acid which is a weak acid so what I have done is taken a beaker with water with a universal indicator. So currently it's kind of orangish color and then if, when the CO2 gets bubbled into the water you're going to start to see the color change. We're going from a neutral which is pH of 7 for water to a slightly acidic uh, pH. Okay, So that's pretty much the reaction. We're not too worried about the mechanism here because we're just getting rid of CO2. All right, so that's the uh, reaction, and I'm going to now take you to the station where I have set up the experiment. I'm going to cut it off here because it takes too long to upload a YouTube video that's more than two minutes long. So I'm going to stop here, and when we come back, we're going to see the experimental setup. All right, tune in. All right, um, this is the experimental setup that I have for our experiment. If you notice right away, there is no condenser. I think the procedure where I read it, they recommended not to use the condenser. Instead, you'd, you'd be covering your flask with aluminum foil and put on some cold um, paper, water, water cold paper on top of uh, the, the bent. Uh, it's because there's a lot of impurities which can clog up your condenser and that's why we're doing the setup. So it's fairly even a simple setup. So we got our stir plate on the bottom we got our mantle to which we have our round bottom flask containing about 32 grams of salicylic acid. This is pure salicylic acid. And then it, it's got that V clamp into which uh, one end of the clamp is hooked up to the thermometer. So we can keep uh, hold of the temperature. And then at the bottom, it, it just, it, there's no condenser. We're directly connecting the adapter to um, uh, the, f the round bottom flask and then whatever distillate that comes out we're going to just collect it into the beaker because phenol distills at about 181 degrees we don't really need a round bottom flask or even when we collect it we don't need to have a flask we can just uh, put some beaker to collect the waste that comes in before say 170 degrees it will be a murky cloudy 
um, solutions that we're gonna collect. And you see that tube running out of the outlet that goes into the beaker containing water and some universal indicator. Keep in mind, we're generating CO2. So if what we learned in general chemistry is too, true, then we should be able to see the CO2 bubbling into that water containing the universal indicator and we should be able to uh, see the color change of that universal indicator in there. And on the back, which you can see, is the mantle power supply running into the temperature controller and it runs into the wall. And um, I've set it at about 20 for now at, at the heating level. I can go a little higher once the reaction starts to get going. As you could see, right now, you can only have pure solid. In a moment or two, that salicylic acid will melt and will become liquid because we are getting rid of CO2. All right, so that's the experimental setup. And I'll probably put a design of it in the description, but I got to finish the experiment before I can do it. And we got beautiful jack stands, obviously you can get a good look of everything that's there. It's a fairly simple setup. Doesn't take a heartbeat to get this done. All right, I'll uh, put additional videos as needed if I make any changes, or if something happens, then I'll record it. Otherwise, we're gonna just keep going until the temperature of the flat, the reaction mixture hits about 181, or around 180, I'm gonna start to collect phenol. When you collect it, if it looks impure, you can do a double distillation. Otherwise, you're set, you're good to go. So it's a fairly simple lab. We're going to uh, do it. And then this is part of our uh, sequence of series of videos where the phenol will go into a series of compounds. Eventually, we will make acetaminophen. That's the goal. All right. Tune in. All right, it's been about 20, 25 minutes. Let me walk you through what has happened in that time. So I put a stir bar into the flask and weighed about 32 grams of salicylic acid and uh, set the ter temperature controller at about 25 to 30 because I don't want to put too much heat into a flask containing a dry solid. And then, um, and then I let the reaction go with constant stirring. Initially, nothing will happen as the CO2 is liberated, you'll start to see the solid melt. And then at that point, what I did is I went ahead and covered it with aluminum foil. And because we're not using a condenser, we got to somehow keep the system cool. So I just went and got some water in the beaker and put some ice. And it's really cold, so I just dipped some, filter, dipped some regular paper in it and then folded it and put it on, squeezed it before I put it on top. You don't want to just put a wet paper because that wet uh, paper will drip and that dripping will go into your beaker. You don't want that. You want to squeeze it and just put it on top. All right. And uh, the temperature is currently at about 120 degrees. The boiling point of phenol is 181.7. We're going to collect everything. I've already started collecting and I noticed there is some kind of a white murky liquid in it. But then, well, we're gonna do distill anyways again, so I didn't really care. So I'm gonna go till the temperature gets to 181.7, or right about 182, and then I'm gonna shut off the heat and the whole system come to cool. And that's what's happened. But I thought I'd be able to see the CO2 generation more clearly, but I guess it, uh, it was not enough CO2 in it, I guess. I don't know what happened, so you can't really see a whole lot of color change in it. Uh, it's not the same thing as your bicarbonate dissolving in vinegar making CO2. That was instantaneous. I may have to read about it, but for sure, I didn't see a whole lot of CO2 coming through that tubing into the water containing the universal indicator. But I, hey, that's not a big deal that it didn't happen. But we do know that we are collecting our product, and just want to show you. I transferred some of the drained liquid into this flask here because I'm going to distill it, so I'm transferring it into a distilled flask. So you can see some murky liquid. I guess the camera is really not picking up, but there is a clear white liquid on the bottom. I'm sure that will come off when you 
when you distill it. Anyways, that's the current status of the process. And I will catch you up when I'm ready to go to the next step. Uh, yes, you can see now. See that white liquid in there? That's impurity. It's the clear liquid. That's the phenol. So we're going to have to distill it again. Depending on time, we may do it in this lab period or the next lab period. But that's not a big deal. All right. Okay. I'll stay tuned in and then I'll be back with the final step in the phenol process. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, about um, after about 30 to 45 minutes of distillation and um, initially I was starting to get that uh, cloudy little substance and uh, so I kept it aside but then after about 130 degree on so I started to collect everything that came around 130 to say 160, 170. I could never get to the 181. Um, but so this is the liquid that I got. It looks pretty clear. So I collected every bit of drop that came after 130 to about 160. That's the most I could get. And then um, this is the liquid. I'm going to put it in the fridge. And if phenol is in there, it should crystallize. It should have already crystallized. So I don't know if it's not enough temperature here. So I'm going to put it in the fridge and give it a shot after a day. If not, we're going to recrystallize and hopefully this is what our students would also be doing is they get the initial distillate and then they can come back in the next class period and redistillate it to get the purest of the pure phenol. Now, I did spill a little bit of this on the tray as I was removing it, so I probably lost a couple of grams. So I cleaned it up and uh, so the station's not dirty, but I probably lost a couple of grams in that in that process but I got everything that was in here this looks pretty clean no contamination whatsoever so I'm gonna put it in the fridge and I'll see you all in a day tune in <laughs>